VIP access. VIP access with Anyiko on Africa Loud. My name is Anyiko Owoko, and uh, I'm very happy to be here at the fourth edition of Gote Institute's Industry Talks, presented to you by The Jam. Um, the Jam is a music concert series that is happening here tonight. So after the talks, please, we ask you to stay behind. There's going to be some really great music. And I will start by uh, going through our topic and discussion of the day, which is safety planning for more inclusive and safer spaces in the industry. Event spaces and cultural spaces should be accessib access accessible and safe for everyone, especially during at night, but we are still seeing and experiencing violence and danger, particularly towards um, girls and women at night. That's not only it. The recent anti-finance bill protest is an example also of unforeseeable and unprecedented social political uprisings that can cause disruption, and violence. When that happened, this led to a lot of events being cancelled or postponed for fear of safety. Generally, there's a need to formulate new policies and practices um, to develop a safe culture around public spaces, be it events, nightlife, or cultural spaces. And without further ado, I'm going to start with this experienced gentleman over here, Mr. Christopher Kirua. Oh my God, where do we start? You have over 20 years in the event space. Yes. Like when I was starting the media scene, you were already killing it. You really have been in the game for a long time, and we are happy to have you here. If you could please introduce yourself, um, the work you do in events, and your company, Kate Chris Limited. Thank you for having me. Um, it's an honor to be here. This is my first time here. So I'm really pleased. Even when I was coming, I got lost a bit, but... Uh, Thanks for inviting me. Um, I think these kind of talks are important. I know I'm supposed to introduce myself. So my name is Christopher Kirua. I am a co-founder of a company called Kate Chris Limited. Kate is my wife. Chris is me. Limited is everybody else in the company. Uh, we've been in, in the event space uh, in terms of experience 20 years. The company is 10 years. So, you know, there's a difference between how long the company has been and the experience you have, because by the time you're starting a company, then you need the necessary experience to run that company. So before that, I was employed in several agencies. One of them was, uh, I like giving credit to where I was, um, uh, I was given an opportunity. It was an uh, EXP agency that had a footprint across 17 countries. Out of that, I was able to learn what is known as uh, experiential marketing. But all along, I kept feeling we had everything in place except safety and security. So I'm happy to be here to talk about this. Everyone, it's good to be here. My name is Marianne Wamoyo. I am the Programs and Events Manager at Bookbank. And as you said, yeah, we were in the thick of it. <laughs> um, I'll be happy to talk about uh, what measures we took. Um, our book bank is, uh, as she said, we are renovating Nairobi's iconic libraries. And we've renovated two so far in Islands and Kaluleni. And now we are working on renovating the Macmillan in town, um, just along Banda Street. Um, you're all welcome to come and visit the libraries. Um, what we do is uh, we create spaces and we we, we like to turn them as palace for the people because at the end of the day, you want to be treated as a king somewhere, right? So um, we are creating this space to make you kings and queens of those spaces. So yeah, more to come, yeah. Thank you so much. And then last but not least is Njeri Gitungo. Thank you so much for having me. Um, yes, I am a producer, program manager, DJ, I wear many hats, just like a lot of people in Nairobi. Um, um, so, but I work with the Nest Collective, and we are a multidisciplinary arts collective who work with different mediums, film, literature, uh, music, uh, curating events. Um, and we work with different themes, and a lot of our themes are around blackness, queerness, um, identity, um, being Africans, being citizens in Kenya. Um, and so we've done a lot of work uh, over the last couple of, we've been 
in existence for 12 years now. Um, and yeah, yeah, it's a long time, it's a long time. Um, but yeah, and we also get to do a lot of the work that we do because we're also quite a number of us at the collective. Um, but yeah, I'm honored to be here to discuss inclusivity and safety because one of the things that we've done, one of the events we curated is Strictly Silk, which, was, which is an all women's, trans women, non-binary folk event that we started in 2018. Um, and so it will be interesting to hear the thoughts of other speakers as well and to share my insights. Yeah, thank you. you specifically sp specialize in safety um, and inclusivity, but safety number one throughout the years. If you could just break it down for us when we're, when we're talking about um, s event spaces, events themselves, um, cultural spaces, what, are the, what, what do you need to consider when it comes to safety and inclusivity um, or either one of the two? Uh, for you, as as a consultant in the in in this specific field, what do you consider? If we could break that down. So, <clears throat> a little bit of background. When I was starting my events uh, journey, I had not, I didn't start with a lot of special focus on safety and security. This came about when um, I attended. I won't mention the event for you know, for the sake of <laughs> whoever is, was behind those events. And we had an event where the entire structure collapsed. Um, some people died. Uh, we had an event where the security couldn't manage the crowds. So people crashed in into the event and people are trampled on. And then because when people crash into an event, it means there was no... Uh, you know, vetting. Like when we are getting inside here, the security guy was busy vetting us to know if uh, that we are safe uh, to, to come in here. So then the result of that was that a lot of people now lost a lot of the items. Some were knifed, you know. It was a huge event we had in Uhuru Park sometime. It was a political event. And uh, the security was overwhelmed. There was a lot of theft. There was a lot of, you know, assault. Um, so, I started studying safety in events because of that, um, and then I discovered the problem is with us, the event organizers, it's not the people. So, you organize an event, and when you're doing your budget uh, line item, food, alcohol has the biggest budget, then the VIP zone has the biggest budget, then you hire the big cast for the artist who will be performing. Then you do a lot of marketing. You print a lot of banners. Then, oops, oh, we hadn't talked about security. Then now you put security somewhere down there as AOB. So a lot of our events, the safety and security is AOB. It's, it's, it's that thing you discuss, and then you say, so who normally does security? Ah, Nani works for a certain security company. So you call that security company, and... Um, the guy runs a security company that provides guards to guard banks and some buildings. Then now you brought him to the event space. They have absolutely no clue. You know a guy who runs a bouncing, uh, bouncers, as they call them, you know, they're supposed to be called ETSOs, event security trained officers, but who has trained them? Then now you bring them to the space. The guy has just come from the club with red eyes. So now he's here at the gate trying now to know what to control. There is zero briefing that happens most of the time in events. Um, we had an, uh, the company I went for, EXP, and this I can say, uh, there's an event they were, they were doing. And um, the marketing director of that particular uh, client, uh, according to the program, was called on stage. So she stepped on stage. And now she was about to introduce herself, she disappeared. What are the different considerations when it comes to security protocol that you, you all know as the event managers and producers, like this is, and we can't, we can't miss out on this, yeah. So um, for me, when, when now we, we get a brief from a client, if it's not our event, the first consideration is the venue. Venue determines almost 50% of 
your security risks. So if you say, if you tell me today we are going to waterfront in Gong Rescues and you tell me we go to KICC, we will use all our persuasion skills to convince you to shift the event to KICC. Why? Because KICC by default is already safe. T-shirts are like a, like a big currency, by the way. So if you're printing T-shirts, you always know you're printing extra for the community as well. So um, yeah, uh, we also have very good um, uh, stakeholders, security especially. Um, during this time, they were giving us messages. So this is what we have. This is the, um, in the news we are getting. So as you're preparing, you need to put this in mind. Um, we also, um, at night, uh, there's usually blind spots in the different spaces, right? So we hire guards with dogs at these spaces um, to make sure the blind spots are catered for. Um, dogs in Ahonga are blind spots. Sometimes they become aggressive. <laughs> and um, as you're dealing with kids, as much as you're getting police, and I know sometimes they're armed, we encourage them, if you're coming close to the kids, please um, don't show the um, weapons to the kids. That's, that's not nice, actually. Um, yeah, so we had to sit down and think through everything, and I, I'd say it's the team effort. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that the team were able to come through um, the short notice, and I think after that we slept for like a week, <laughs> because every adrenaline, every thinking capacity that you're doing, um, uh, you, we were able to rest, and um, we were thankful that we were able to um, execute a very good um, event. Team members to come and also be part of the event. And um, uh, the way Chris says, he's has had experience to see this is a goon, this is a thug. The community members themselves know who's a goon, who's coming to do, uh, to disrupt the event. And something that we appreciate the community for is if they identify that person, they either take the initiative to get them out or they consult with the security. And we always have a security desk um, in the libraries where we are having these events. So in case you feel you're not okay, in case you are uh, about it, you just go to the security desk. And also, we wear uniform things like t-shirts to understand this is a book bank team member. In case I have a question, in case I don't feel I'm okay, this is the person I should reach out to. Yeah. What are the measures, um, additional measures, that you feel strongly need to be put in place to tighten security and safety generally when it comes to the event scene, um, in, especially in, in Nairobi and in Kenya and in very many spaces? like Whoever will be watching this, this is a masterclass coming from, from Asia, sharing our experiences, which can save you a lot of trouble. There is a day I just posted on, on, on my Instagram and Facebook account, and I asked, um, Germans are having elections, and Berlin Marathon is happening. Can that happen in Kenya? You can imagine the reaction. Okay? So what is this level they've reached where they can host a whole marathon on a Sunday and they're having elections? You imagine Kenya elections, then we have Stanchat Marathon. Okay? So why are we not at that space? It's because we have not taken safety and security seriously. The reason why there is insecurity is because people are good people. Nobody, and I don't, let me repeat this. The reason why we have a lot of insecurity in events is because nobody wakes up from home as a bad person. They walk up from home, pay the ticket. They just want to go and do what? Have fun. Have fun. Now, we need to change. Before you leave home, you have to prepare like you are going to a war zone. Because that's what it is, guys. And this, mostly to the ladies here or, or, or any other person. When you leave your house like this, just know 50% of your safety and security has vanished. You already what? Pray. Can you really contain insecurity in a concert of 15,000 people 100%? You can't. You, as the person attending this event, you need to help us help you by being very cautious that where I am, all these people that are around me are not necessarily like me. That's very important, okay? So we need to, we need, when you're planning an event, Safety and security, and we haven't talked about safety. Safety and security need to be item number one. 
not alcohol and food. Germany has systems that work. And that's why we are in the streets fighting for our systems to work. So if we do have, yeah, if we had systems that actually support us, or systems that work, policies that, that are there to support the, arts, um, the events that we are trying to put out, um, then we'd be having different conversations. Um, trainings for that you guys have touched on, even just for event, events people, promoters, um, and trainings on different things, on safety and inclusivity. Uh, if we had better infrastructures, multiple better infrastructures that work for all the people. But if you have information of next of kin, that's the first person you'll call and be like, oh yeah, where? Um, your guy here is not okay. Come get them. And um, these are some of the things that you need to think through. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's a work thing. It's a, if you were the one in my shoes, if I was the one coming to an event, what would I like to, how, how safe would I like to feel? How included would I like to feel? I'll just be raving about, oh, that event was amazing, and I was safe, and I felt really nice. Even if they charge me 10,000 shillings, I will pay, because I know at the end of the day, I'll enjoy and I'll go home. I am standing here outside Gote Institute with the legendary Chris Kirua, a very good friend of mine who has experience in the events industry for over 20 years. Today we were talking about safety planning for an inclusive and safer event spaces. Chris, how are you doing? I'm great. I am good. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to come and share. Fantastic. Yes. So um, today's discussion is at the center of the work you do. When it comes to events, safety and security is number one for you for very many reasons. How did you um, like the event today and what advice would you give to an upcoming event manager or producer when organizing an event and when trying to make sure you will have a successful event? I think number one, what people don't know is that today, I look like maybe the guy who came to give advice, but guess what? Because of the other two panelists, yourself, and the questions from the audience, I was also learning. So when an event like this is put together by you and GOT Institute, it's very important for you back at home who is watching or wherever you're watching from to attend. Because yeah. we learn and feed from each other. Yeah. So what has made us focus on safety and security yeah. at Kate Chris Limited is because of the cost of not doing it. Where you do an event and people are either injured or you do an event and there are structures that collapsed. You do an event and you didn't do your safety checks, fire erupts. You do an event, you didn't have proper safety in terms of paramedics to respond and not react. You do an event and then you didn't plan with seasons. You planned with sunshine and then it rains. Yeah. You do an event, then protests happen. Yeah. What happens to you? So. What we are discussing today is ability to prioritize risk assessment and mitigation measures yes. and to put alcohol and food below risk, safety and, sa safety and security. Hi, Marianne. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm well. Thank you so much. So we know that you are a programs manager. But um, part of your role is not just events, but a lot of initiatives and um, programs that you're having at Book Bank Trust. But um, today we're specifically speaking about events, safety, um, and inclusivity. And inclusivity is something huge for Book Bank. Every single event, but not just the event, but every single thing that Book Bank does make sure that inclusivity is at the center of it. So what's your takeaway from today's event and how can you advise somebody who wants to come up um, in events and is, is wondering about how to engage a community? Mm. Yeah. Um, thank you for today, Anyoko. It was amazing. You, you, you are amazing. First, let's just start there. Give flowers where they're due. You thank you. Um, yeah, I have learned a lot today, honestly, because I think no man is an island. Because I, I'm still trying to wonder how Chris does Kirua does 
we are ahead of time. That part, if you hack it, you're, you're gone, you're, you're done, done, you're good. So um, it's, it's a learning thing every day on, on events and um, planning. I'd say inclusivity is a very major break for uh, BookBank because as much as we're creating these safe spaces, who are you creating them for? For everyone. I even say there as a joke, even if a cow wants to come and rest in the library, it has its own right. Every human is welcome in the library because at the end of the day, that's where you find refuge. You find a place to escape through fiction. You want to learn about the laws of your land. That's the place you need to get the books for. I'm really excited to be here with Jerry Gitungo from the Nest Collective, a really amazing programs manager, event producer, DJ, and all round Nairobi hustler. How are you, Jerry? I'm very good, thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for today. We had a really dope conversation about how to make our cultural spaces, event spaces, and events particularly more safer and more um, sensitive to inclusivity. And I wanted to ask you about something you spoke about which I thought was so profound. One of the advice that, um, advices that you gave out to the audience was don't do it alone. Make sure you have a team and make sure this team is not just a team but as diverse as possible. Could you break this down? Because I think many times people are like, I can do it myself. But then even the team is like, oh, I can call my sister, my friend. Um, what is this diversity and how do you ensure that? Yeah. I think when you're talking about diversity and inclusion, you can't do this by yourself. You don't know everything. Um, you don't represent all marginalized communities. Um, so you have to bring everybody as, as possible, as many people as possible to the table. Uh, you have to bring them into the decision making and the planning of the, of the events that you're proposing. Um, also, this job is quite taxing. This, uh, it takes a lot from you because also if you're being intentional, you'll, it will, this involves giving people what they want and you can't go at it by yourself. Another thing that would be great to do is also do surveys, have focus groups, hear from other people, receive feedback from other people, uh, involve other collaborators, partners who are not just within your community but expand on your community as well. So that's my takeaway, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. What an amazing day. We had the fourth edition of Gote Institute's Industry Talks. Today we were discussing safety planning for more inclusive and safer spaces in the creative industry when it comes to events specifically. I had a list of amazing event producers, managers and programmers, so let's listen to them and also talk to them and take away from their advice. VIP Access, VIP Access. with Aniko on Africa Loud.